you know, of course it was a great achievement for Chen Long winning the Olympic Games, but the Super Series is our elite tier of tournament, and you... Yeah. you I you just know. thought it was it was fun to, to look into what about the um, top-ranked tennis players, how many tournaments have they played since the Olympics, and that was quite interesting because uh, Andy Murray... Um, he was the Olympic champion, wasn't he? He was. Yeah. Second consecutive uh, gold medal no, from... No, number Adam. one on the world ranking as well. He's yeah. played five tournaments since the Olympics. And actually played the week after the Olympics. Um, and the same goes for um, the world number one in women's uh, single in tennis, Angelique Kerber. She's also played five tournaments, as has uh, the um, much unexpected uh, gold medalist, uh, Monica Puig. So... So... Um, they haven't won all the tournaments, but, but in my opinion, uh, that doesn't really matter. I'd like to see Chen Long lose a couple of times because then other players can say, hey, I beat the Olympic champion. And we saw how, how uh, happy the Chinese uh, women's doubles yesterday of uh, Huang Dongping and, and Li Hui were when they beat the Japanese uh, yeah. well, uh, Olympic champions. So... Um, um, I think yeah, we, we need the players to play. Uh, that that would be really nice. Uh, yeah, and I understand the the need for for some time to recover and and mm. to rest and 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 so on. That but we have that in the calendar. We have uh, the BWF two. have uh, allocated two months where there's no Super Series tournaments yes, whatsoever. Yes, exactly. At the so players' request. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I I I totally agree. And and it's. That to me, as a sports fan, you know, if, if I'm going to turn up and pay money to, to come and watch the uh, a top tennis tournament or a top badminton tournament, yeah. I expect to see the top players entered. Whether they lose early on or whether they, they win in the tournament, I need to, to know that they are there and that there's a chance that I might get to see them. Exactly, exactly. And Chen Long, I mean, in, in, in the 12 months, last 12 months, he's got 11 tournaments towards his world ranking. Now, there's got to be at least one team competition in there, and possibly two. That's not an awful lot of tournaments per 12 months. No, and, and uh, remarkably, he hasn't won a tournament this year, uh, no. apart from the Olympics. Yeah. Uh, so, so it shows how much emphasis there are from from the, the players on the Olympics. It's really important to do well, and I appreciate that. Uh, I just wish they'd uh, play the other tournaments as well. It's yeah. Like. Um, um, seeing the um, sort of. Um, Symbiosis that is there from from um, being part of the system, being part of the super series system, where um, there's a lot of money to be won. Yeah. Charles Ranta, former world champion, Chinese men's singles coach. Essentially, one of the problems that AJ will have against Chen Long that his own defense is not strong enough. Very good. Attacking, constructive player, AJ Tahram. He does much better when he's controlling the rallies. Yeah. He's a lovely player to watch. I do Six. like his style. He's he just looks very relaxed the whole time. I remember last yeah. year when he reached the final of the Korean Super Series, didn't he? Play well there. And in doing so, he became only the second player from India ever to be in a Super Series tournament Seven, final. Five. But in the past, he's struggled here in China as AJ Jayaram. This is his fifth appearance here, and he's never previous to this year been beyond the first round. It's been a little up and down for him as well. I mean, he was... Um, did he win the Dutch Grand Prix? No, he, he lost was in the final. He lost in the final. Yeah. He was the two-time defending over. champion yeah. in his third Six, consecutive final. Seven. His fourth final in total at the Dutch Grand Prix. 
So it's been it's been a little bit up and down, and, and, and when things are up and down, it's often a sign that, that you do well against some playing styles and not so well against others. And the other sign could, of course, be that you've been a little bit off form due to injury. Yeah. Um, no doubt that he could raise his level a lot by uh, improving his defense. Yeah. Well, he has had his injury woes. He had shoulder surgery in January 2014. I remember last year he had a, a bad stomach muscle strain yeah. as well. And, uh, I mean, it, it, he has been... We can't hide from the fact that he has been inconsistent. I mean, at the beginning of this year, si his first six tournaments, he had first-round losses. Yeah. In, and yet he can be in a Super Series tournament final, and he's playing today for a place in a semi-final of a Premier. Play. So far, he's looking reasonably Seven. good, uh, Chen Long, after his uh, post-Olympic break. Even though he's scored seven points, uh, AJ Jaram, I still feel that uh, Chen Long is in total control so far. Landed in. Over. Eleven, eight, so to the mid game interval, Chen Long, three time former champion with three point advantage here, yeah, clearly. In. Well, we were struggling to hear what was being said there. It was a little bit difficult to hear, and I'm, I'm not sure also whether there was some Hindi in it, and yes. I wouldn't yeah. be able to understand that anyway, so... Yeah. Good judgment. Earlier you said to me, Steen, that you felt that AJ Jairam needed to be in control and that his uh, his defence simply isn't good enough. When you're talking about being in control and attacking, presumably it's not necessarily hard smashes. It's no, it's like this. Yeah. Playing down below the tape. Uh, playing precise clears, uh, lifts that are like this. Uh, maybe it was a little short, we didn't really mm. see that, but it had a, a really good height. It was just about 
the right height to pass over Chen Long. Uh, it was a bit short. We could see that on yeah. his on his um, um, feet. If if the feet, at least one feet, is not in touch with the first baseline, then it's quite short. Oh yes, yeah, very, very nice. And even that winning smash wasn't that powerful, was it? It's no, it all was about very placement. Precise. Yeah, very precise. It was interesting to listen to Chen Long's comment. Great pictures there. How how low he is in his yeah. stance. It was interesting to listen to Chen Long's comments after he played someone who at the uh, Thomas Cup and lost, mm. because someone who has a style which is similar to Chen Long's. And, and and he was the one who was giving Cheng Long the most problems at the Olympics, playing, taking him to mm. three games in the uh, in the quarterfinal, I think. He said that uh, Cheng Long said about the match against someone who he said, I couldn't really get my attack down on him. Mm. He was so solid in his defense, so I became a little bit uncertain and and uh, impatient. And then um, someone who with all his patience, he got some chances. Someone who is not a strong attacking player, but mm. eventually Chen Long didn't really know when the attack was coming. Was it coming the first time the chance was there, the second time, or only the third time the chance was there? So so by, um, by having a really, really uh, solid defense himself, he was able to put some pressure on Chen Long on, on two important occasions. Yeah. And, and that's, in many ways, it's a recipe for the players chasing Chen Long here. It is that they've got to have a solid defense. They've got to be able to survive his attack. They've got to have a patient attacking game because you don't, you don't um, sort of uh, blow a hole in the Chinese wall that we're seeing in the picture here by, by simply one smash. You've no. got, you got to prepare for it. You've got to build up. You've got to be... Um, uh, variated in your game. Uh, we've seen on some occasions where where Chen Long hasn't perhaps been in the best of his form that that um, uh, someone who um, Lindan of course and, and Li Chung Wei uh, can do it uh, and, and then some players who does not have a defense on the same level like Jan Jorgensen and Victor Axelsen but they have uh, a bit steeper attack, uh, powerful attack. So if Chen Long is not at his best, they can sort of um, uh, give him some trouble. They've still lost the majority of the matches, but uh, mm. but so that match over. and the comments Stay after the match against 12. someone who is sort of the uh, blueprint to what should the chasing players work on in order to beat Chen Long. Yeah, fascinating. Once again, it was placement rather than power that did the damage. Fourteen, sixteen. Mm, Apologises for hitting his opponent. Three more points for AJ, and he will match his uh, previous best set against um, 
previous best game against um, Chen Long. Never scored more than 17 points. That's good. It was really high on that one at the net. problem with the defense there is is it that he's just uh, not getting the legs out towards the shuttle AJ Jiram is the one I'm talking about yeah. he, he seems to just lean towards the defensive shot on his backhand rather than yeah. getting the legs there yeah I haven't actually looked that much into it okay <laughs> but, well, I, but I think maybe his, his stance is not um, it's not deep enough um, I had Oh, that's a very, very good deception. Service so over. 15, 17. I had a presumption once that we didn't see a lot of Indian players have strong attacks, but that's definitely uh, down the drain now that uh, Shrikan Kidambi is there because yeah. he's got a fantastic attack. Um, and of course, he won this tournament yeah. two years ago, didn't he? Yeah, he was ready so to over. pounce. 15, Long. 15. Sheer threat of him being that. Yeah, good quality. Yeah. But if we see the stance that, that Chen Long has in his defense, he's so low. His point of gravity is is so low, so that you, you bent knees crouch down. Yes. Yeah. And you get a really good uh, balance. Uh, if you can manage, if you have the muscle power to, to mm. manage, because I mean, <laughs> you, you can also be standing really, really low and not be able to at all move because you use mm. all your power to just stay there. Oh, indecision. Oh my goodness. Oh. 20, so, game point opportunities. 20. champion Chen Long. Twenty-five shots. Yeah, and actually a rally that is uh, just a plain rally that, that Chen Long loves because he will win the majority of those rallies. And, and when I say that, I mean that but nothing special happened from AJ Jaram. He just played a basic game, clear drop, lock, hoping for a chance to occur. It won't occur unless he does something to, to create his own lock. Yeah. <laughs>
Interesting to see if um, change of side has any effect. Chen Long now playing with the drift. Good shot. So it's over. Long One, smash. Two. Sort of first of the baselines. Goodness. Mm -hmm. Crikey. Save us over. How on earth did he manage two. to control that off the top of the tape? Chen Long. Look at this. Launched himself towards the net. I'm guessing the one thing that AJ Jairam mustn't do is lose heart about his net play. He cannot afford to do that. He's got to control the net. Yeah. And and if he doesn't, then he's got to find a way to control it. Mm. But it's it's difficult right now. I mean, yeah. you never want to set off your opponent. You things are going as normal. You lost the first it's one, 15, 21. Three, five. It's, it's, I mean, what I'd like to see is to see him try something different, to do something, because otherwise he's just waiting to, to, to be eaten. Yeah. In, in, in many ways, I'd like to see him, when, when he has these chances at the net, yeah, that was okay. That was actually okay in my opinion. I'd like to see him go even more for the chances. I'd, I'd rather have him making uh, some mistakes because he's trying to play really, really sharp than just getting it over and, and, and hoping yeah. for the best because hoping for the best won't win him this match. No. He's got to hope that he simply has the day. Oh. That's well played. Okay. Very Seven. well played and Chen Long. Oh, he slips there. Doesn't look too serious, but can be really nasty mm. there because you get the heel of the shoe uh, into your Achilles. Yeah, and he doesn't need any more injuries. He's had his fair share. Thank you. 
Was that tentative, that movement there? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, and, and maybe I'm reading too much into it. But the thing is that even though it, it doesn't prevent you from playing on, it can hurt yeah. really badly. Mm. There wasn't full commitment there, no, was there? No, not at all. It, he was he was expecting Chen Long to get it back, mm. and he was almost on his way back while carrying out the um, attempted kill at the net. Well, he points Four. towards the back line as if to say, should I have played that or should I have left it? Yeah. That one. That was a wonderful example of what you've been talking about with his low center of gravity as he moves. And he's a tall guy, Chen mm. Wong, so. Yeah. He's got to have some power in those legs there. Yeah. 189, that's six foot two. Wanting an overall from the umpire. Look so at that behind the back. Oh, that was, well. Couldn't really see it. No. Well, we've got Hawkeye here. Hawkeye will tell us for sure. It was in. Yeah. One. And I'm not sure how often AJ Jairam gets to play on court number one. He, he wasn't aware of that <laughs> no, <he laughs> until, oh, I'm on, on court number one, I can actually Seven challenge. Five. Yeah. And what a good thing because he was right. Yeah, absolutely. But it is his opponent who has the advantage right now. Advantage to be precise. Now there was definitely something in between the first and second games from Charter and Zer about net play because those little gestures of him talking about, I don't know what it is, taking it early or. I mean, if you've got a player, Steam, that's, you know. At the moment, Chen Long looks very much in control of this match. And yeah. What do you as a coach say? I suppose it depends on the player in question, doesn't it? About yeah. Oh, yes, there's that slip again. Yeah, that's, that could have been very nasty. Do it, mainly you just say, you're doing well, keep it going, keep the focus? Or that, that, that depends. I think here, uh, Chen Long is, is pretty safe. He's never lost to AJ. He's never lost a game. He's one game up and leading comfortably in the second game. So here, 12, um, there might be something regarding the next matches, regarding getting to the best level 
of yourself as a player that that you would sort of emphasize yeah um, you can still improve you can use this match to to test some things to improve something still uh, whatever that might be but, so but you can definitely Six, go for the little 12. details that that's a good chance of uh, of trying to get them into your game but you can only do that presumably with a player that you know has the focus to get the job done yeah. on this match and 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 uh, exactly and and it's so important that if it's 11-9, then it's a little bit more difficult. Then yeah. you perhaps need to have a little bit more emphasis on winning this game. Yeah, sure. But th that's it's a very good opportunity, uh, and, and some coaches, in my opinion, doesn't always take it to mm. use these matches where you're uh, a bit better than your opponent to to improve and develop your game towards other uh, more uh, difficult matches. Yeah. Uh, especially if there's something you've been working on in practice and not really that yet felt that you could uh, implement it seven. in your game, then mm. those matches, they might be a good chance of doing that. Yeah. I can remember listening to Roger Federer after one of his matches. He was two sets to love up and he was cruising through the third set and he suddenly started serving uh, from the ad court, court an awful lot of serves kicking out wide yeah which wasn't really of any use in that particular match but he was going to play Nadal next yeah. which of course he was using that to get in the groove to serving out wide to the left-hander and exactly. that's exactly what you're talking yeah. about 14, I don't think I was ever that confident enough of winning any match <laughs> <laughs> that I could have done that. <laughs> but it's a whole new thought process. It's a whole new level of of uh, development. And, and it gives the match much more uh, meaning yeah. than just sort of um, get it over with. Yeah, Seven, absolutely. Eight, 14. And, and there's also matches where you're so big a favorite and you're so much better than your opponent that it's impossible to do anything about it and just get it over with just yeah get off the court get back home get some rest get some yeah. uh, something to eat and so on um but but uh, here this is definitely a match where mm. development can be um, attempted and then you can say hey, he's the olympic champion Eight. can he mm. still develop and definitely can that that's the hallmark of champions that yeah. they always feel that they can develop mm. um, it's perhaps not big areas that um, that comes to the eye easily but it's small areas that the players feel that they sense that oh when it's like this uh, in in the match and I do this I really really like to improve it a little bit and do something else Nine, yeah 15. And one of the great examples of that is in golf, where Tiger Woods, after winning a number of majors, um, took a year to um, to sort of work on his swing, because, in his opinion, it wasn't solid enough under certain uh, circumstances regarding course design and and wind conditions and so on. That's that's the true hallmark of champions. Yeah. Michael Johnson, another 400 meter runner and 200 meter runner. Yeah. It d describes in his book, his book is called Slaying the Dragon. And the dragon, his dragon, was running the perfect race. Yeah. And in Atlanta, 16, where he won his second gold medal, 200 meters, in a world record time, he says there was a, a slight stumble three strides out <laughs> from the blocks and he said that's what motivated him to continue on to Sydney because he wanted to run his perfect race without a little stumble without a stumble yeah always looking for improvements oh that's well taken now you see that's what we were alluding to earlier that net play yeah well played Seven, 
Let's over. 17, 12. Backs off AJ Jayaran. That's your point about just getting it over the yeah. net isn't good enough. No. You have to go for it. So stand your ground yeah. and take a chance. One of the problems also for AJ might be the, um, <coughs> the pre-game um, thing. That, I mean, ahead of this game, he's lost all previous matches. So the one question that he's going to ask himself is, wh what have I improved during the last three months, six months, nine months? I don't know the, mm. the time frame. But what have I improved so that I now have a better chance of beating Chen Long? Yeah. And, and if he can't answer that, yeah. then it's really difficult to, to think why this should go in another way that it's gone all the other yeah. previous four times. Exactly. And it is exactly a year since they last met. It was the first round of the Hong Kong Open, which of course is next week. So match points have arrived. Four right. Chen Long. Service so over. 14, 20. But good to see that Chen Long seems to be in good shape here. And yeah. Um, that he is well prepared for the tournament. Okay. Yeah. Second time of asking. 21 15, 21 14 in 40 minutes. Our first two matches done and dusted in 40 minutes each. Match won by Chen Long. 21-15, So through to the semi-final. Once more, Chen Long. Three-time former champion. Yeah, looking good. And with the withdrawal of the number one seed and the champion from last year, he's the highest seed in the tournament. And he's looking in good form. First two matches complete. Next up is women's singles. Busala Venkata Sindhu of India, the Olympic silver medalist, up against the left handed Her Bing Jiao of China. Then it will be mixed doubles, and Yu Yang Sung and Chang Ye Na will be up against the Olympic gold medalist Tuntui Ahmad and Liliana Nasir. 
And then we will finish with men's doubles. But with women's singles up next, chance for us to look at the women's singles draw. This is the most diverse discipline left in the tournament. Seven different nations involved, just two Chinese players. And apart from that, then six other different nations. Five seeds left in, of course, the number one seed, the world and Olympic champion, Carolina Marin. She's up against Tai Su Ying. That should be a tremendous match. But we're going to concentrate on the bottom half of the draw. And Herbing Jiao, there she is, the left-hander, coming through the section of the draw that featured the only former champion of the women's singles title at the China Open in this year's draw, and that was Sina Newell, who lost in the first round to Pontip Barana Prasetsuk of Thailand. So there is the 21-year-old from India. This her first quarter-final here at the China Open. Her fourth appearance here, though, for her Bing Jiao. I was very surprised to see that this is only her second appearance here at her home Super Series event. She played three years ago which means that she must have played as a 16-year-old, came through the qualifying and reached